Hello. Uh, welcome back to this uh, installment of the American O'Connell um, Legal Clinic series, uh, sponsored by the Marlboro Council on Aging. Thank you all for coming today. Uh, we're he we're talking today about a topic and a set of people that people have no idea kind of exist. Um, they're called geriatric care managers. And whenever I I have clients come in and they'll tell tell me what their issues are, and I'll say, you know. You really need to talk to a geriatric care manager. They'll say, like, a what? You know, what, 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 what is all of that about? And so I thought that it would be really useful to have um, um, a team that acts as geriatric care managers. Linda Sullivan and Deb Gittner are both here. Um, Linda Sullivan is a social work background. Deb, or excuse me, Deb Gittner has a social work background. Linda Sullivan is a nurse. Uh, um, and they teamed up to, be, to work with for, as geriatric care managers. And I think probably the best, first slide, um, the, the best way that we can try to talk about geriatric care managers is to try to give you some illustrations of standard problems. And we're going to kind of talk through those problems. And we're going to take questions as we go through these problems. Um, so it, it, so the, because you're going to see some of these problems and, and, something's, and a little bell is going to go off like, oop, I know somebody that, that, somebody that that happened to, right? And so you can kind of see the role that a geriatric care manager can provide. I guess, but mo you know, kind of most broadly, the way you can think of ab about it is, if, you know, when you're trying to figure out, if you feel like confused, you know, like how does this whole system work? Like somebody is involved somehow in the healthcare system, whether at the hospital, or they're at the nursing home, or they're in rehab, or they're at home, and you've got, you know, there's issues, and there's, you know, people are using drugs, and is that the right drug, and why, how are they feeling, and, every, and people are just kind of confused about what's going on. Well, the purpose of a geriatric care manager is to make you less confused about that, right? Now, I can tell you some very specific things about how some government programs work, and I can tell you about your rights in various regards, but don't ask me the first thing about the drugs or about the various kinds of programs and how they interact and how they might help you or somebody that you, that you love. So um, who, can you, who uses geriatric care managers? Well, a lot of individuals. We refer a lot of folks to them. Uh, a lot of families. Uh, if you're trying to figure out, I mean, I'll give you the, you know, the classic case. I've got a family in Shrewsbury. I've got a, a, a sister who is living with her sister and the sister's husband uh, in a wonderful condo in Shrewsbury. Uh, but sister number, the single sister who was a retired teacher and had always lived on her own and has gotten along very well, is slipping. You know, she's got some issues. The other sister and the sister's husband have been taking care of her. They'd like to take care of her at home. They feel the other sister feels really guilty about doing anything but, you know, the question is, well, should they, should they all move to assisted living, right? Does the one sister need nursing home care? Are there people that could come in? You know, there are all these kind of possibilities. And, and helping, having somebody come in who can really be a third party and kind of figure out for the sister that is kind of slipping, how far is she slipping, you know? And what the family dynamic is and what the other kind of social supports could be for that family, that's like a really important thing. So families, attorneys, we use them all the time. Um, if, if, you are tr if we're trying to figure out whether somebody is eligible for nursing home care, among other things, right, while they're still at home, a lot of times we'll ask a geriatric care manager to come in and give us a sense of that, right? But we talk to them about a lot of things. Um, they, they are at the hospital a lot. Hospitals use them, once again, to try to figure out this stuff. Social service providers, a whole bunch of different people. Um, and kind of what are the advantages? And next slide. Kind of what are the advantages of them? Well, I guess I'm going to have them talk to you about that. 
Um, they're going to kind of introduce themselves and just talk broadly about what it is they do. And then we're going to go through some kind of real life situations. We'll talk about what the issues might be in those real life situations and talk about what the role of a geriatric care manager might be. How's that? Is that all right? Um, I think I'll start off with just letting you know that. Um, <laughs> that You're too far away. I'm too far away? Okay. <laughs> okay. I won't. I promise. No rabbits. <laughs> Remember when we brought in the lawyer and she kept on, like, I couldn't get her away from the screen? Right. Right. No, I, I don't want to do that. Um, anyway, I wanted to talk to you a little bit why we feel it's an important piece in your care. Um, there is a maze in healthcare, and it's very difficult for the average person to walk through that maze. Um, a geriatric care manager with Debbie and I, Debbie being a social worker, myself being a nurse, we can go in and at the same time kind of do a double assessment on people. We're able to look at medications, we're able to look at the psychosocial situation of the, of the home and whether or not the needs do meet the criteria for the care that you're looking for. In case you're not aware, you really do have to meet the criteria to go to a nursing home. You just can't go to a nursing home unless you want to go and pay, pay privately. But under insurances, you need to be able to meet the criteria. You're there for a short-term stay for rehab. We're there to make sure you get what you've paid for with your Medicare. You're not being taken off too soon. We also... Um, try to keep people in their homes, be able to, Debbie's specialty is the services that are available for people to come in and assist with them in the homes. We also try to make sure that medications are properly dispensed, that you went to the hospital, you were on four drugs, now you came home, you were on six, but the four you were on when you went in are all gone. Is that supposed to have happened? Or was there an error? Um, so those are the things we try to do. Look at what you were on before you went in, read the discharge summary, find out why those medications were taken away, and make sure that you've gotten the proper medicines to be on. And I think that as attorneys using us, we're there to help them decide what's the best route to take you as you plan for your long-term care. I just had one of my partners, actually I was coming out, she said, oh, I just wanted to let you know I just use your people, right, was the long term, because we, obviously there are a number of, of geriatric care managers are out there, we use these folks a lot, but you know, you, you want to get prices and shop and stuff. But she said, she said, yeah, she said, I gotta do something. This family's just a mess, you know? And that kind of summarizes a lot of situations. You know, there's a brother that's involved, there's a, you know, there's a sister that's sick, there's a niece, you know? And kind of how to, to figure all that out is really important. And I think basically we can kind of be a mediator. When you have a lot of children, or you've got a lot of siblings, or the wife doesn't agree with the children, or the husband doesn't agree with his sister-in-law, you want to make sure someone's there keeping uh, um, a, a straight line on what our real goal is to make sure that person who's ill is getting the best care. So that's another area where we really can mediate through those issues. Deb, you want to add? Just one note. You are our client and we are advocating for you. We are listening to you for what you want to make happen in whatever situation that may be. And that's the most important because as Linda pointed out, families are, don't always listen and children love us, but sometimes they have their own agenda. And so we are working for you in terms of what you would like and what is best for everyone involved. That's, it. that's an interesting final, final point. And, and yes. We get phone calls. You, you need to repeat the question before oh. you answer it. For the, how, do, for the how do we get notified? How do we get called when we're needed? We get phone calls from seniors, from anybody who's sitting in this audience, from an attorney who's listening to an appointment and saying, I think there are issues. I can handle this piece. But as, as Arthur pointed out, I don't know this piece of all of the agencies and resources. We get calls from physicians, we get calls from hospitals, we get calls from children, we get calls. People find us over the internet. It's amazing um, where people have found us. A lot, yeah. Right. Some families are in, absolutely. 
Right. Absolutely and it's right. And I, th and I think what's so, what's so important to kind of appreciate being in the system is, you know, you know, everybody has a stake, right? Everybody has a stake. When you go to the hospital because you've got a problem, hospitals are, not, are, are paid, used to just be paid by Social Security this way, but now pretty much everybody pays them based on DRGs. DRGs? Diagnostic That's something or other groups. So you go to the hospital and, and, the, and, the, and Medicare or your insurance is going to pay the hospital to take care of you a fixed amount. They're going to get a ready fixed check based on this code book. They have this gigantic code book, like every disease and little subsets and stuff, and every one of them has a price at the end, right? And the price is different depending on which hospital you go to. And when you walk in the door with the diagnostic, di diagnosis is X, that's the amount that Medicare or somebody is going to pay the hospital, right? whether you stay for it a day or five days, right? So, what is in the best interest of the hospital? Now, of course, they're, in, you know, they're looking at your interest, and I think they're very, in, you know, and I'm a trustee at the hospital, and I really believe in it's a nonprofit, but at the same time, you know, they, 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 are, they do not lose money if you get discharged after a day or two days. If you stay for 10 days and they get paid the same amount of money, you know, that's a different issue. If you're at the nursing home, I mean, I just had, you know, you have this conversation with folks who are at the nursing home and, and you know, geez, can you, do you think really dad can come home? And the nursing home is like, oh, I don't know, he, you know, he really looks bad. Well, is it, what is the nursing home's interest? Does the nursing home want you to leave, right? Does the, does the, when, when you're trying to figure out the meds, you know, when you're at the nursing home or whatever, let me put it this way. I always, I remember a long time ago I did volunteer work in the prison system when I was in, a long time. And, and I, I remember coming out of the prison system once and talking to this psychologist who, or, who worked there. He said, remember, the, prisons, the prison warden's best day is the day that everybody sleeps through it, right? Nothing happens, right? At a nursing home, the nursing home administrator's best day is the day when nothing happens, right? So, you know, some, they may have, there, there, is, there, there may be a, you know, kind of a hidden bias towards using drugs to keep things from happening at the nursing home. So the question is, like, who's looking out for you, you know, or who's looking out for the person that you know who was there? And, you know, I do legal stuff, but I don't get all that other, you know, all that other stuff. So just as an example. So now we're just going to use the first, ex the first example. 